Good morning, Aquarium Online Academy. We are so happy you are joining us this morning. My name is Sarah. I work at the Aquarium of the Pacific in the Education Department here in Long Beach, California. And I'm so glad you're joining us this morning because we are going to learn about some of my favorite animals. And we say that a lot, our favorite animals, but these really are my favorite ocean animals. We're going to talk all about sharks. So if that's something that you want to learn more about, to talk about, to see some pictures of, and even watch some live footage of some sharks, join us today. Now, before we get started, we do have a text line. So if you have any questions that you want to ask us, if you want to share some observations as we're looking at different sharks, if you want to know more about something we mentioned, you can text us. That number is right here. It's 562-286-1838. Now keep in mind that data rates do apply. And if you're one of our younger viewers, make sure you have an adult permission before you text us. But you can text us your questions, your observations, your thoughts, anything you want to know more about. And I'm not alone here in the studio, so I have some friends who are helping me out. So Dana's in the studio with me. She's waving good morning to everyone. And she's going to be changing or controlling what you see behind me. And then Cynthia is at our computer, and she's going to be taking all of your texts. So send them in, and she'll pass them on to me. And we can really talk about what you want to learn about sharks. Now, if you are watching this program live, you're going to use that text line. But if you're tuning in when we're not live anymore, so it's not September 8th, uh, at 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, if you're watching it after that time, you can still send us your questions, your thoughts, your observations, but we're gonna ask you to use this email that's right below that phone number that's live at lbaop.org. And we're gonna answer those via email if we're not watching it live. But if it is live, if it's Tuesday morning, go ahead and text us your questions. All right, are you ready to get started? So what we're gonna do is we are first going to draw a shark and that way we can learn all about the different body parts of a shark and also it's gonna help us learn about some adaptations. Now this word adaptation, we talk about this word a lot and it's a kind of a big word, but what an adaptation is, is it's something special on an animal's body that helps it live in its habitat and its habitat is its home. So for the sharks that we're gonna look at to begin with, it's gonna be a coral reef habitat, but we're gonna think about sharks in general, what things on their body help make them a shark and help make them help them survive in their habitat. So we're gonna draw that shark, but first we're gonna take a look at our shark lagoon. So we have cameras in a lot of our exhibits here and Dana's gonna bring up shark lagoon. I'm gonna step off the screen. So we're gonna bring up shark lagoon and we're gonna make some observations. So as scientists here, oh, we do have a little photo bomb right here. So this isn't a shark. This is our turtle. This is Theo saying good morning. Can't really figure out where the front of that camera is. Oh, he's gonna knock the camera around a little bit. So right now we're just observing Theo's part of his shell and his slippers and now his tail. So Theo is an Olive Ridley sea turtle. He's one of two Olive Ridley sea turtles that we have here at the aquarium. And we like to say we break for turtles. Turtles can hold their breath for about four to five hours. And so when they come up and take a breath or move around, we like to stop and talk about them, point them out because we do love our sea turtles. But now that Theo has left the screen, is going probably to take another long nap. We can take a look at the sharks we have here. So as I was saying, we have cameras in a lot of our exhibits and we have live footage. We can watch what's happening in our exhibits. You can watch it too. You just go onto our website and search for our webcams. So, oh, here comes Theo. Theo really wants us to talk about sea turtles today. That's okay. We're gonna skip a little bit ahead, say goodbye to Theo, because we really want to focus on sharks today. So you can see them in the background over here. Oop, here we go, coming towards us. Take a look at these sharks and think about what do you notice about those sharks? Here at the aquarium, our aquarists, the team who work with our sharks, spend a lot of time watching and observing our sharks. And that helps make sure that they're healthy, helps with their health care, but we can make observations when we're learning about an animal. So what do you see? What do you notice on their body? Thinking about shapes. Do you notice any shapes? They're kind of in the background, but they'll make their way towards us. Think about how they're moving. What part of their body are they moving to help them move? Are they using fins? Which fins are they using? What shape are their fins? Do you notice any special colors on these sharks? These are all things we're gonna think about when we draw our shark. All right, we're gonna take another moment of observation. There we go, we've got two sharks swing right in front of us. Oh, here we go, perfect. This is a gray reef shark. So take a good look. What do you notice? All right. So we are going to head, oh, we're gonna wait for this black tip reef shark to go by. It's a good look at the body of a shark. All right, now we're gonna head over. I have this cool document camera 
and I have set up a whiteboard and a marker. And that's where I'm gonna draw my shark. Now, you are welcome to draw your own shark. You can use paper, you can use markers or crayons or color pencils, or just a pencil or a pen, whatever you have available if you would like to follow along and draw with us. And then we would love if you send us the pictures of your shark if you'd like. Or you can just follow along. You can share your observations to yourself, to someone you're watching with. You can text us your thoughts however you'd like to participate. But we're gonna switch over to my document camera and we're gonna get started drawing our shark. All right, let's, let's see if we can zoom out. All right, that is very bright. Make it a little bit darker. There we go, that'll be easier for us to see. All right, so the first things first is the shape of a shark's body. Now we like to call it kind of like a football shape. So I'm gonna draw football or almost like a lemon shape. So sort of a really wide half circle, and then I'm gonna connect it to the bottom, just like this. So this is the body shape of our shark. Now this actually is a really important thing, the shape of their body, because it affects how they swim. Now, besides the body, what do we have to add onto our sharks? Because they have more on their body than just this. So let's think about what we noticed when we looked at our shark. What do we think? Maybe we'll go back to Shark Lagoon and I'll bring my whiteboard over and we can draw it while watching our sharks. All right, so let's take, oh man, Theo. Theo just loves the camera and the spotlight today. That's all right, here we go. So take a look at these sharks here. What do you notice? One of the big things we notice are their fins. So we're gonna draw some fins on our shark. Now sharks have a lot of fins and they all help them swim, but they all serve a different purpose in how that animal is going to swim. So. Let's start with that dorsal fin. The dorsal fin's gonna be the fin on their back. And you'll notice they're pretty big triangles. Oh, there's a kiss from a zebra shark. So they're different triangle shapes. Now our zebra shark's fin is a little bit of a smaller triangle versus that gray tip or the gray reef or the black tip uh, reef shark. Their dorsal fins are a little bit larger. So I'm gonna draw sort of in the middle one fin. So there is the fin, the dorsal fin of my shark. Now. That dorsal fin is important because it tells us something about how quickly or slowly that shark might move. So the larger the dorsal fin, the faster moving that shark is gonna be. And that's because that dorsal fin helps with balance. My goodness, Theo. Say hi, Theo. That's all right, you can just leave him. He'll go by. <laughs> I don't think Theo's ever been so active in the morning when we've done any of these classes. So we'll let him have his spotlight, but we're gonna focus on those sharks. So that dorsal fin, like I said, helps with balance. So this keeps the shark upright. So they don't really move it too much, but it does help keep them steady. If you think about fish, sharks, even whales, they all have dorsal fins. Think about an orca whale. An orca whale has the largest dorsal fin of any whale, of any mammal, and that's because that animal can swim really fast. So the larger the dorsal fin, the faster moving that animal is going to be. So you can draw a really big dorsal fin on your shark, or you can draw a little one depending on how you want your shark to move. So we've got the dorsal fin, but is that the only fin that shark has? Here we see. No, I just saw a lot of fins as that shark swam by. So we're gonna go for the tail or caudal fin. Not cuddle, we're not cuddling our shark, although that would be fun. But a caudal tail or the caudal fin is a fin at the back. So I'm gonna erase the little end and I'm gonna draw another triangle. I'm gonna draw kind of two, let's see, two kind of triangles. Does that look like a shark tail? Good enough for us, right? So we see our shark coming towards us or around and they have these sort of lobe tails. Now when the shark moves, they're gonna be using that caudal tail to help propel them or move them through the water. So they move their tail side to side. So you can take your hands, clap them together, move them side to side. And that is how our sharks move, moving their tail side to side. Oh, I erased part of my shark while I held my whiteboard. So they're gonna be using that tail to help move them through the water. Now, as you make observations in our shark lagoon, you may notice that the tails are different shapes. On our reef sharks, they're gonna be kind of more like this, whereas, look at our zebra shark, has that really long tail. So the top part of their tail is really long and they have less of a lower lobe. So it just depends on the species what their tail is gonna look like. But that tail fin, that caudal fin, helps move that shark forward. Now we've got our dorsal fin, we have our caudal fin. Are there more fins? Absolutely, we have what we call the side or pectoral fins. So you can stick your arms out to the side. Those are gonna be your pectoral fins. Those are the fins that are on the sides of our sharks. 
And you see, they don't move them too much. They don't flap them or move them back and forth like we would if we see a fish moving. They kind of go out to the side, almost like airplane wings, and they also help with stability and steering so the shark can move from side to side. So we're gonna draw one right here in the middle of our shark, and then this one's gonna be the one that's on the other side, right, because they have two pectoral fins. You can see them as our sharks come by. They're kind of hard to see because you're almost looking straight on at them. So they're out to the side. So those are the pectoral fins. All right, so we've got our dorsal fin that helps with balance. We have our caudal fin that helps move the shark forward. We have the pectoral fins that also help with balance and help steer. So we've got our fins, but what else are we missing on our shark? Because this right now kind of looks more like a fish than a shark. But there's a couple things that we can add to our shark to help it look more shark-like. What do you think? Hmm. A mouth, right? Our shark needs to be able to eat. So I'm going to erase a little space here, and I'm going to draw a nice big mouth. Got another triangle coming in. So there's my shark mouth, but what goes inside of its mouth? A tongue? Not a tongue. We need to include its teeth. Now, shark teeth can be all different sizes and shapes, just like we said the dorsal fin can be different sizes. But we're going to make them nice big triangles so that we can see those teeth. Da, 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 da. There we go. Is it looking more shark-like right now? I think that helps, definitely with those teeth, right? So shark teeth are really important. They help the shark do what? What do our teeth help us do? Eat, right? They help us eat. And so the different shapes and sizes of shark's teeth help them eat different things. So it depends on what that shark's gonna eat, what their teeth look like. Now, shark teeth are pretty incredible. Sharks can have up to 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. 30,000, that's three zero comma zero zero zero. It's a lot of zeros in that number, but 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. So for us, when you're little, you have your baby teeth, and then as you grow, you might bite into something and your baby teeth fall out, and then you grow your adult teeth. So I have all my adult teeth now. Now, if I were to lose one of my adult teeth, would I grow another tooth? Unfortunately not. I'd need to go to the dentist and they would give me another tooth to put in there, a false tooth, to fill in the space. But sharks, they lose teeth every couple bites they take, and they're gonna grow new teeth. They never run out of teeth. Now, they lose their teeth so often because of their skeleton. So the skeleton is a structure inside their body. And think about our skeleton. Our skeleton's important. It helps us stand up really tall. It helps us run and dance and do all kinds of things. And our skeleton is made of bone. We have a bony skeleton. Man, Theo, stealing the show here. That's right. That's why we love these live webcams, because we never know what we're going to encounter. We're talking about sharks, and all we see is a sea turtle, which is totally fine. We do love Theo. And then we've got our little crew of sharks swimming by right now. So our skeleton is made of bone, but these sharks who just passed by, their skeleton's a little bit different. Their skeleton is made of something else. Now, the thing that their skeleton's made of, we do have in our body. We, their skeleton is made of cartilage. Have you heard that word before, cartilage? If you know where we have cartilage in our body, go ahead and point to it. Our nose, our ears, and even in between our joints. So cartilage, if you wiggle your nose, or if you move your ear up and down, it's pretty wiggly. Cartilage is very soft and flexible. And the entire skeleton inside the body of the shark is all made of this soft, wiggly stuff. And what that means is that their teeth are not fused into bone like they are for us. And so every couple bites they take, their teeth are gonna fall out. So don't worry, they have plenty of teeth and they never run out. So they can always eat with their teeth. Cause that's really important for a shark to eat, helps them grow and stay healthy. All right, so we've got our fins. We have our mouth and our teeth. What are we missing? What do you think? How's our shark gonna see its food? It needs an eye. So I'm gonna draw my eye right here. A nice big eye. Looking around. All right, let's see. Our shark has its fins. It's got its teeth so it can eat. It can see. Ooh, interesting. How is our shark going to breathe? Well, our shark is actually a type of fish. So thinking about fish, is it going to breathe the same way we do? Is it going to use its lungs? No, it's not going to use its lungs. It's actually going to use gills. And so what they have are called gill slits. So I'm going to draw them right here. Sharks have about five gill slits. Now, we say usually they have five gill slits because there's always exceptions. Now, there is one shark in the ocean that has six gills. And we call it, strangely enough, the six-gilled shark. And then 
there's one shark that has seven gills. And even weirder, we call it the seven gilled shark. But for the most part, most sharks are going to have five gill slits. And what they're going to use those gill slits for is they're going to bring water into their mouth. The water is going to pass over their gills. And if we were to look closely inside their gills, there'd be these little hairs or kind of like a little broom or brush that catch these tiny bubbles of oxygen. Here comes Theo. These tiny bubbles of oxygen as the water passes out through their gills so they can breathe. All right, so my shark has teeth and an eye. It's got gills. It's got fins. Is it missing anything else? Hmm. I'm going to draw one thing right here in the middle, this line right here. Now, it might be kind of hard to see on our sharks, but sharks and fish have something called a lateral line that runs down the side of their body. Now, this lateral line is really important because it senses vibration. It's kind of like hearing. It's almost like ears because every time something moves in the water, there's vibrations. The sharks and fish are going to be able to feel it along the side of their body. So that's another really important sense that sharks have to feel things around them, helps them detect prey or even know about predators. All right, my shark's looking pretty good. There's one more thing I want to add to my shark, but it did look like we have some observations coming in. So I'm going to take a look at those and then we'll get into the last thing I want to add to my shark. So uh, someone said, Theo is trying to steal the live stream. Absolutely, I agree. Theo is stealing the show today, which is great. We do love Theo, uh, even though we are talking about sharks today. But if you do have questions about sea turtles, go ahead and send them in because Theo's made quite a show today. All right, and then someone from DVA Homeschool said, 30,000 teeth is a lot. I agree, that is so many teeth, but it's really helpful and important for these sharks. And someone else said, nice drawing. Thank you so much, we practiced this drawing. And I'd love to see if you make drawings too, go ahead and text them into us. We'd love to see all the amazing drawings that you have done as well. All right, so I mentioned there's one more thing. Man, Theo, here he comes. One more thing, now it's just getting comical. I don't think we've ever seen Theo circling this many times and bumping into the camera this many times, which is great. It's always fun for us. All right, that last thing I said I wanted to draw. So sharks have all these senses, right? We have senses too, right? Our sight, we can smell, we can hear, we can taste, and we touch things. And senses are really important because it's how we explore the world around us, right? Think about you go somewhere new that you've never been before. You're going to look around. You might smell and see if it smells like something you know or if it smells different. You might touch some things to explore. You might even taste some new foods if you go somewhere new. So our senses are how we explore the world around us. And sharks, they have senses too. Now they have all the same senses we have. They can smell. Oh, let's give our shark a little nose. We've got little nares. They can smell. There we go. So they can smell. They can see. They can taste their food. Kind of touch. They don't touch the same way we do, but they can feel things. But there's one other sense they have. Now, Dana is going to bring up a picture of one of our sharks, and we're going to take a look at what this thing is, and then we'll draw it on our shark. So I'm going to step off so Dana can bring up this photo. So she's going to bring up, this is Big Guy. This is our sand tiger shark. He's one of our, he is our largest shark that we have here. And if you look, oh, I'm not, I don't want to cover it. Right here at his nose, we match, right? We both have freckles. No, those aren't really freckles on our shark. Those are called ampullae of Lorenzini. Now that's a really big word. We're just gonna call them ampullae. So you can say that word together, ampullae. And what these ampullae are, they're little pores, but they actually do something really important. I'm gonna stand over here so you can keep looking at those ampullae. So they do something really important for the shark. It's an extra sense. It's something that we don't have, but they can actually detect tiny electrical charges. Now that sounds weird, right? To have something with electric or electricity going through the ocean, but I want you to take your hand and cover your heart. Do you feel your heartbeat? That boom, 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 boom. Every time your heart beats, you actually send out a tiny little charge. Is that cool? So every living thing that has a heartbeat is sending out that tiny little charge. Now it's not very strong. I can't hold a light bulb and turn it on, but these ampullae the sharks have right there can actually sense those charges. And so what that means is if a shark is looking for food, if they're hunting, and if it's maybe kind of murky, if the water's not very clear, or if it's dark, or if their food is hiding maybe under the sand or in a coral reef, the shark, even if they can't see it, even if they can't smell it, even if they can't hear it, they can actually sense that heartbeat and they can detect their prey. Now, like I said, it has to be close range. It can't work miles and miles away, but close range, sharks have this added sense they can use to find their prey. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to draw, I'm going to cover them up right now because I'm going to draw some little ampullae over his little snout. So there are all these tiny little pores across their snout that help them det detect 
those electrical charges. Now, think about a hammerhead shark. Can you picture a hammerhead shark? They have that really long head with their eyes on either side. That long space in between is covered with ampullae. They have a lot of surface area, so they rely on that sense a lot. All right, how do you think my shark looks? Does your shark look similar? Did you add anything different onto your shark that we should add? If you've added anything else, go ahead and send it to us. But we're gonna leave our shark just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put down my shark. And we're gonna start talking about a couple different shark species and looking more closely at them. Um, but we do have another comment. Jagger said, we love Theo. Uh, we do love Theo. And we're glad, Jagger, that you love Theo too. Oh, and you wanna cuddle him. You know what? I would love to give Theo a big hug too. We can all give him a virtual hug. So everyone open your arms wide. And we're gonna give Theo and all our sharks too a nice hug. It's a really nice thing to send to all of our animals here. All right, so we're gonna talk about a couple different shark species uh, with the last 10 minutes we have of this program. And we're gonna talk about some that maybe we have here and then some maybe that we don't have here. We're gonna start with some of the smaller sharks that we have here at the aquarium. So I'm gonna see if Dana can bring up a picture, here we go, of our bamboo sharks. Now, when you hear the word shark, oftentimes you'll think of sharks more similar to the ones that we drew, or you might think about really big sharks like a great white shark or a tiger shark, these really big animals that can be 15, 20 feet long. But in reality, most sharks are actually pretty small like these. There's about 450 different species of sharks and about half of them are about three to four feet or smaller. So that's even smaller than me. So these sharks right here, these are bamboo sharks. These are that we have here. We have two types of bamboo sharks here at the aquarium. They get about two and a half to three feet long. That's as long as they're gonna get. So they're not very big at all and that's full grown. Now these sharks, you'll see there's a bunch of them swimming together. They tend to be in big groups or a big school of sharks. And that's because we call it safety in numbers. So if they all stick together and they all, if they huddle together when they're sleeping or resting, they might look like a larger shark and that might make them a little bit more scary to a predator, but really they're pretty gentle, docile sharks. Now these sharks are what we call bottom feeders. Think about that word bottom feeder. What do you think that might mean for an animal to be a bottom feeder? So one thought could be that it feeds on things on the bottom, and that's right. They do feed on things that live in the bottom, in, in the sandy bottom of the ocean floor. But another thing that makes them a bottom feeder is where their mouth is located. So think about my mouth and your mouth is located in front of you, right? So do you think we would be considered a bottom feeder? Nope, our mouth isn't on the bottom. So these sharks here, you can't really see their mouth because it's underneath them right there. So their mouth is on the bottom of their body and that helps them eat things that are on the bottom of the ocean floor. <coughs> Excuse me. So these animals, they're gonna feed on things like clams or mussels or worms or whatever they can find living in the sand as bottom feeders. Now, something else to point out in this picture, it's really interesting, something that sets sharks like these apart from sharks like the ones we were watching swimming around the reef sharks is look at this little thing we didn't include in my shark right here, this little hole. Now that isn't just a hole in the shark's head. That is something really important. That is called a spiracle. That's another big word. Let's say that all together, a spiracle. Now we find spiracles in some species of sharks and we also find them in rays. And what that spiracle does is it acts as a pump. So a lot of times you might hear people say that sharks have to keep swimming in order to survive, that they can't ever stop. And that's true for some species, but it's not true for all of the species of sharks. So I didn't draw a spiracle on my shark because my shark that I drew we call a ram ventilator. But a shark like this one, like a bamboo shark, can sit on the ocean floor, can take a rest, doesn't have to keep swimming because of that spiracle. So when that shark is sitting on the ocean floor, that little hole is gonna open and close like this. It pulls water in and it pumps water over the gills. And so this shark can take a rest without moving and still have water moving over its gills. Now a shark like the one I drew, like those reef sharks we saw moving around Shark Lagoon, they are what we call ram ventilators. Maybe we can bring up a picture of the black tip reef shark. Excellent, so this picture right here is a black tip reef shark. And if you'll notice, even though it's kind of far away from its head, there's no hole behind its eye. There's no spiracle because a black tip reef shark is what we call a ram ventilator, which means essentially it needs to continue to ram water over its gills in order to breathe. So whereas that bamboo shark can sit on the ocean floor and it doesn't have to move, it can take a rest because it can create that own, its own sort of pump of water over its gills, our black tip reef shark needs to continually move because as it moves, it can pull water into its mouth and over its gills. So that spiracle is really important for some sharks. It helps them rest 
whereas a shark like our black tip reef shark is going to continuously move. Now, thinking about it continuously moving, that makes it sound like it doesn't get to rest at all, right? How tiring would it be to swim your entire life and never stop? And that leads to a question we get a lot about how do these animals sleep? Or can a shark sleep? So if it's not sitting on the ocean floor and it has to keep moving, it is going to be able to sleep, but it sleeps in a very different way than you and I. What a shark can actually do is it essentially shuts down half of its body. So it kind of puts part of its brain and part of its body to sleep, while the other part of its body stays awake and alert, allows it to keep swimming, and allows it to be aware of its surroundings to make sure that there's no, here is a good picture of a ram ventilator. This is one of our gray reef sharks. They're so pretty. So these guys are gonna keep swimming, but in order to rest, they're basically gonna shut down part of their body at a time. So shuts down one half, the other half remains awake and alert, and then they switch back and forth. Now something cool about these sharks, they're pretty small, I don't know, what did you say, Dana? They're like four or five feet now. So they're about four or five feet right now, but Dana just told me earlier that they're gonna get about 10 feet once they're full grown, which is so cool. They're gonna double in size, and these are really beautiful sharks to watch. Now, something else to point out on these sharks that we didn't draw because I didn't really color in my shark, but look at the color on this shark's body. So they are called a gray reef shark, so they're pretty much gray. There's a little bit of darker spots on their tail. But look towards their belly on the bottom. Do you notice the color change? You can see it right there. So these sharks, and most sharks actually, are gonna be two colors. They might have multiple colors, like that zebra shark had a pattern on its body, but the top of their body is gonna be one color and the bottom is gonna be different. Here we go, this is a perfect picture. And this is a shark that I bet everyone can recognize. What shark is this? You got it, that's a great white shark. Now, the great white shark has this gray up here and then white on its belly. And this is another adaptation of a shark. It's something that helps it survive in its habitat. This is called countershading. And what countershading is, it's a type of camouflage. So it helps the animal blend in from above and below. So think about if you're on a boat and you're looking down at the ocean, what color is the ocean gonna look? Is it gonna look nice and clear? If the water is clear, if it's shallow, you might be able to see pretty far down, but the ocean often looks pretty dark when you look down at it. And that way, the dark back of these animals is going to blend in. So if you look down at the water, you might not be able to see anything, even though there could be an animal swimming below. And then think about it. If you're in the water and you look up, like in the studio, we have all these lights shining down on us. So if the sun is shining down on the water, it's going to look really bright and white, and the belly of this animal is going to blend in. So the top is protected and the bottom is protected. And we see counter shading in so many animals. Oh, here's a good picture. Look. So this is a blue shark. And it, you can tell, you can see its fin popping up, but it's kind of hard to see its body because that blue color on its body blends in with the blue of the ocean. And so this animal is protected, even though we know we, it's there and its fin keeps popping up, we can see it. It's not the easiest animal to spot. That's pretty cool. So we see counter shading in sharks, in fish, in whales. We even see it in lots of birds. There's a lot of animals that use this form of counter shading, this form of camouflage. All right, we have two minutes left in this program and there would never be a shark program complete without me mentioning my favorite animal in the whole entire world. Here we go, Dana's got it ready because she knows that I'm gonna mention it, the whale shark. So the whale shark is not only my favorite shark, it is my favorite animal in the whole world. And this is, in my opinion, one of the coolest sharks. I think all sharks are really cool. They all have cool things about them, but the whale shark is pretty neat. Now, I'm gonna run off screen really quick to grab a part or something to show you that we have. It's super cool. This right here is the model of a whale shark's jaw. It almost doesn't fit in the screen. Here we go. So look how big this is. This is a model of the jaw of the mouth of a whale shark. Now their mouth can span almost four feet across. That's almost my wingspan. My wingspan is a little bit longer, but it's almost my full wingspan. And these animals get about 40 feet long. Now the longest on record is actually about 60 feet, but on average they can get about 30 to 40 feet long. So if you think about a school bus, a yellow school bus, a school bus is about 30 feet. So these whale sharks can be about the size of a school bus or longer. So they're the largest shark, the largest fish in the ocean. And there's something special about them. Even though they're the largest fish, they're actually the biggest gentle giants. So that mouth that we saw doesn't have any teeth. They are what we call filter feeders. So they're gonna keep that wide mouth open, swimming through the water, pulling in 
water. And in the water are tiny little animals like krill, tiny little shrimp, plankton, little fish. And they're going to suck all that into their mouth. They're going to filter it out. So they're going to use their gills to catch all that food in order for them to consume while releasing that water. Pretty cool, right? So the largest shark in the ocean eats the tiniest animals in the ocean. And they're pretty cool because they have this beautiful pattern on their body. All right, everyone, I could keep talking about whale sharks, but we are out of time. So it's time for us to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed learning all about sharks, are their adaptations, about their body, and a couple different shark species. Uh, we have another class today if you'd like to join us. At 10 o'clock, we are going to be teaching, Cynthia is actually going to be teaching one, two, three, counting the sea, but this class is going to be all in Spanish. So if you speak Spanish, if you want to practice your Spanish, if you want to learn Spanish, we're going to learn about counting, uh, we're going to learn all our numbers, and about some really cool different animals. So if that's something that sounds interesting, it's going to be a really fun class. Join us at 10 o'clock, and otherwise, have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow.